Welcome to the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm Tom Powers, the documentary programmer. Very pleased to uh, have this conversation about TIFF's premiere of Flea with the director, Jonas Pohar Rasmussen, who's joining us from Copenhagen. Thanks very much, Jonas, for being here. Thank you for having me. So the central figure in Flea, Vameen, is a pseudonym for someone that you first met in high school. Can you describe the process to get him to tell his story? Well, it's it's been a 25 year process, I guess, since we met each other in my hometown and he arrived all by himself from Afghanistan. Um, and of course, at that point, I was already curious about why and how he got to Denmark from Afghanistan, but uh, he himself didn't want to talk about it. First of all, because he was traumatized by what happened, but also because he had this fake story that he had to stick to. Um, so he didn't want he didn't want to lie, uh, and therefore he didn't want to talk about his past at all. Um, so it really took years. Uh, I have a background in radio documentary, and I think about 15 years ago, I asked him if I could do a radio documentary about his story, and he uh, and he said no, and he said that he knew that at some point he would have to tell his story, and when he was ready, he would tell it to me. But at that point, he wasn't ready. And then years went by again, and I was invited for this workshop uh, here in Denmark called Anidox, where they gather animators and documentary filmmakers to uh, develop ideas for animated docs. And they called me up and asked if I had an idea for an animated doc, and I thought about his story again. And uh, I phoned him up and asked him if he would tell his story about as an animated documentary, and he finally said yes. Also because with the animation, we could make him anonymous because he didn't want to have his face on his story. You know, he didn't want people in the supermarket to know his innermost secrets and his traumas when they met him uh, in the aisle. So and now that the film has been playing at uh, film festivals and, you know, his story is out in the world and will become more out in the world as it, uh, you know, goes further into distribution, um, what's it been like for him to to watch his story processed by by audiences and critics and so forth? I think I think for him the first step was to see me kind of interpret his story because of, of course it's his story seen through my lens. Um, and in the beginning he saw the film. He was of course the first one who saw the film when it was when it was done. Um, and in the beginning he was said he was very touched by the story, but he was in doubt if it was because it's his own story uh, or if it was in fact because it was a good film. Um, but then it premiered and the critics were really, really good. And we had an overwhelmingly positive response to it. And that was really, that really made a difference for him because uh, he had carried the story within him for so many years and seeing that people could relate to his story and understood what he'd been through and what it's, what it's done to him, it really meant a lot. Uh, so he's he's really happy now that it's getting a life out there and people are seeing his story and, and that people can relate to it. So I want to ask you about the process. You, you described that you have background in radio documentary and so you were beginning to interview him as audio uh, recordings. What, what we hear in the final film, how does that relate to the very first audio recordings you did? Well, it, it is the very first audio recording I did. So, so what you hear in the film is, in fact, the first time that he tells the story to anyone. It is the real voice. It is my real voice from that situation where he lies down and tells the story. And and this thing about him laying down with his eyes closed, talking present tense, is a is a technique I've I've used in radio documentaries before. Um, because with radio, you don't have an image, so you really need a subject to paint an image for you. Um, and and by having his eyes closed and talking present tense and being really descriptive about the situations. I asked him to, for example, in the beginning, he sits in the garden with his siblings. Uh, and the sister is telling stories about the father. I asked him to be really precise about what did everything look like? Like, what did the garden look like? What kind of plants were there? And what did the house look like? What did you see outside the walls from the house? And one thing this does is that it gave us a lot of material to kind of animate from, uh, but also it, it, it brought him back uh, so when he's laying down there, he starts to recollect really. Uh, he almost starts to smell what it smells like. Um, so instead of retelling the story, he really relives it and, and we relive it with him. 
I mean, we get to experience in the film, uh, you know, what it means for him to kind of break through these secrets that he's kept from uh, from so many people all these years. Um, I wonder what it meant for you in the course of making this to to be with a person that you've known for a long time, to have these secrets revealed, and to know in a way that you're now carrying these secrets, you know, as as a filmmaker trying to tell his story. Can you talk about how you process that yourself? Well, there's different things in it. One thing is that it's it's a big task, you know. It's 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 a big story, and I I really felt like I needed to uh, appreciate what he gave me and really show it in the work. So there, I really put a lot of work into making uh, the film as precise as possible to his story. Um, but it also, you know, it brought us closer to each other. We've known each other for 25 years. And of course, this thing that he had um this secret uh this story that he couldn't tell uh of course secret creates some kind of distance between in, in relationships so him finally being able to tell the story and us being able to talk about his past uh, definitely brought us closer so this whole process of making the film even though we were really good friends beforehand uh this thing really brought us closer as well mm -hmm. any filmmaker is relying on collaborators, cinematographers, editors, composers. Um, but when you're making an animated film, uh, uh, you know that collaboration. I don't know feels even more elevated and and maybe even more, um, you know, out of your control if you're not an animator uh, yourself. Um, so I wonder if you can talk about the you know that collaboration uh, with your animators and you know how you exerted your own you know directorial vision over that process that you, you may not have the you know hands-on skills to actually execute yourself well I, I had this core team i had an art director jess nankles and an animation director kind of look yeah and those two had each of their teams who kind of worked on the film so the core team was really the three of us uh trying to to define the visual style of the film and we needed to be aligned. So from the beginning, there was a big work just doing research and finding out the style of the animation and the backgrounds and, and what the film should look like. And, and we didn't start animating before all that was in place. And then we had this art Bible that we could always go back to and say, okay, but this is what would define the film should look like. Um, so it was a very close collaboration. And then each of those two guys, they had their own team of a lot of people working. So I, I, I wasn't, in daily contact with all the animators or all the background artists, but um, Kenneth and Jess was uh, in, in control. And then I talked to those two guys. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about bringing emotion out in this film? You know, it's, it, it's one thing, you know, right now I'm looking at your face and if you were, you know, happy or, you know, startled or confused, there's a whole set of, uh, of things that we can uh, read on your face. Um, that uh, that changes when you're animating someone, um, and so I, you know, I wonder if you can talk about you know how you brought emotion out in the film. Um, I think there's so much emotion in the voice already, and what what the animation really does is that we could be even more precise because when you look at a human face or or live action footage, there's so many things that you look at, um, but with the animation, we could really be precise on on small things that can, can can give the emotion, but also that we could change things. So for example, when he's very angry, like this, this film is also about, you know, uh, trauma and memory. So, and things he has a hard time remembering. And with the animation, we could really be more expressive and go into this more emotional layer um, when things were hard for him or when he was scared. Um, so I think, Animation actually enabled us to be even more emotional and 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 be really precise on when we wanted uh, to feel what's inside of him. At the core of the story is the you know is this one person's journey, but there are other themes that are layered into uh, this film. It's a you know story of a young gay man coming out. It's a story of a refugee with you know geopolitical implications over how the world uh, treats uh, refugees. Um, you know, I wonder if you can, I mean, it, it, this began because you had a friendship 
um, uh, with Amin. And, and within his story, these other layers come out. And I, I wonder what are some of those other layers that were interesting to you to, to bring out? Um, yeah, it's true. Like, first of all, when I started this film, I didn't think of it as a refugee story, you know? This was a story about my friend. Um, but what I learned was this, that this thing that he never felt at home, you know? Um, and that these stories uh, of him being a gay man in Afghanistan and him being a, a, a man in Denmark who couldn't live with his past were linked in that way. That in Afghanistan, he couldn't live with being gay. Uh, and in Denmark, he couldn't live with his past. And therefore, he was always searching for a home. He was always searching for a place where he could be who he are with everything that entails. Um, so this, this thing about finding a home was really key. And I learned that quite early in the process that, okay, but he's still searching. He's still searching for a place where he can, where he feels free, where he feels he can be who he are. Um, and, and, and in that way, uh, the refugee story uh, and the gay story uh, are linked uh, because it's about being true to yourself. Um, we've uh, covered a lot of topics uh, efficiently. Um, the, the, I think the last question I have is the context in which we're watching this film right now in fall of 2021. You can't help but think of the recent convulsions in Afghanistan that are creating a new generation that's eager to flee the country. And, you know, you're not an expert on Afghanistan, but I, I wonder what goes through your mind watching current events today. It, it just it just feels incredibly sad and heartbreaking. Um, you know, it, some of the some of the shots we worked on for months during this film, uh, and now you see the same shots again. And our our film took place thirty years ago, and now it's, it's just the same. Like you see the sh shots of Kabul uh, and smoke rising from explosions in the city, or, or airplanes trying to leave the airport. Uh, like it's. It's, it's just heartbreaking. And, and of course, I spoke to Amin about it as well uh, yesterday. And and he's, he's just heartbroken about it because he's like, now so many people will again have to flee and will be in the same situation he's been in for five years. Um, and yeah, it's just heartbreaking to see a country so ruined by geopolitics and being stuck in the middle of a war that wasn't really theirs. Um, Flea is going to be uh, coming out into uh, release uh, later this fall. I know it's a film that we're going to be talking about for a long time to come. We're really pleased to be able to show it uh, to audiences at uh, Toronto. And uh, Jonas, I thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me.